Chris's voice is hard to hear sometimes. All right, everybody on the conference call can hear fine. All good. Okay, yeah, so and just letting you know, we'll be starting here in just a few minutes, and we have live on Facebook going, so whatever you say, they're going to be able to hear. So just letting you know, we'll get started soon.
Christ online. Thank you for joining us. I hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July and got to uh, spend some time at home with their families. And I hope everything went well. We're going to open up our morning service with prayer. Dear God, thank you for letting us gather together and worship you, Lord. Thank you for letting us live in a nation that allows us to, to worship you and to celebrate you, Lord, and to give us the freedoms that we enjoy. Help us to always be faithful. Help us to always be loving. Help us to always be always be wanting to do what is good and always wanting to be and strive to do what is right. Please forgive each and every one of us our sins and be with us, Lord, as we go on with our morning worship. In Jesus' name we pray. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unto me. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall end. Oh. 
She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Why did my Savior come to earth? This is the time that has been set aside for us to do the Lord's Supper. We as children of God, each week has been commanded to commune and to do the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, 
verses uh, 23. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, to bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's supper, the Lord's death, until he comes. <clears throat> Therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eat and drink it, eat and drink damnation. Eat and drink judgment for himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and number the whole thing. But if we judge ourselves, we will not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be forgiven. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. By the end of the first day of the week, Lord, we as children of yours can come together for the Lord's Supper. We thank you for sending your Son to this earth and that he was willing to give his life that through him we might have salvation. Bless this bread as we take of it, cleanse us, and forgive us our sins. In the Son, bless the name of Christ. Pray for the cup. We thank you, Father, for once again sending your Son to the cross. And he would go to the cross and die and, and hang there for us. We realize that though his body has been stretched and torn, pierced in the side that they come out blood. And as we drink this cup, may it be a resemblance to us and to give your son for us. And once again, forgive us our sins and we thank you so much. In your son's name we pray. We also commanded to give as we have as prospered. And may we always remember that God is blessing us. He's blessing us right now. He blessed us so much that He gave His Son. Son gave his life. So God is blessing us right now. So as we give, 
us remember that God is blessing us right now. And we have that right to give a portion of our earnings back to him. We have uh, four ways to give. Number one, you can go to the website, www.homesgrowthcoc.org, and click on the blue Give button. Number two, text the amount. Thank you, Heavenly Father, again, for waking us up this morning, and that you started us on our way. And Heavenly Father, we pray that we will have a good day, because this is the day that you have given us. May we give as we prosper, and we just thank you for everything that you have done and will do for us. Get the skies above in your grid, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and friends seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend, trust in the promises grand. Sing it and be happy, yeah.
that many of you are joining us here on the teleconference or on uh, Facebook Live, and I know there will be several people also watching on Facebook a little later. Don't forget to tune in this evening for our evening service as, as we'll uh, be uh, having a little something there for everyone to enjoy the evening worship together. I, uh, I've talked to many of you this week over either on the phone or, or some of you, many of you came to Mark's uh, open house, but I got to talk with several different folks uh, it, who are our Christian brothers and sisters this past week. And uh, inevitably, people are just getting tired and frustrated. They're, I think they're not, no one's scared that I, I, I met any of our members who are just flat scared. I mean, the, the Lord said, don't be scared or worried. And I, I would say words like scared, worried, and anxious don't seem to be uh, the defining type words for our, our congregation. But tired or frustrated seems to be the words that explains many of you uh, uh, how you've been feeling. You just want this to be done. You want to be able to come back together and see each other. The brothers and sisters in Christ are just missing each other and want to be together. And, and I realize that is that is what we all want. We want to be together. And this, the, we had that time of quarantine and, and we've not been able to meet ever since. The last time we met for worship was on March 15th. Well, here it is, July 5th. And we, we haven't met since March 15th. And that, that's a long time not to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We know that Michigan was under a stay-at-home order from March 23rd to July 1st, or to June 1st, which was a 70-day period of being just stuck at home. 70 days of, of you're only supposed to go during that 70-day 70 70 day period. You're only supposed to get out for essential needs getting groceries or medicine, these kinds of things. And even though June 1st, there was a lift of that order of the state home, we, we have some more freedom, we still have many restrictions. And the bad news is, I, I heard here recently, a governor, she suggested, we don't know, but she, she hinted at the fact that this Tuesday, she might be going backwards. Uh, and and uh, we may, because with this resurgence, if you will, it seems like the, the COVID-19 is kind of coming back again with even stronger uh, than before. And, and because of that, uh, she hinted that on Tuesday she might be even going backwards and reinstituting some of the more strict uh, orders that we were having. We're in phase four now, and she definitely said we're not going to phase five, but we might even be dialing back. And, and to hear that news, I know many of you, you said, I'm just sick of this. It's time to get back together. It's time to live our lives. And, and what I want to remind you is, is this morning with this lesson is that we can come out of this thing stronger. We can come out of this thing even better than before. And I want to remind you that God is maybe using this time just to, as a test, as, as a way for all of us to become stronger together, to become stronger in the Lord. Remember, the testing of your faith develops what? Perseverance. And, and so we need to remember that even though these times may not be ideal, they may not be what we want, we can come out of this stronger. And you say, well, what? How can I? How can I come out of this thing even stronger than before? What, am I, what can I do that will help me come out of this quarantine time stronger than before? Well, as always, as always in, in the Lord's church, we need to turn to our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ for the example. And what I want to look at this morning is how Jesus himself dealt with quarantine. Gee, how he himself dealt with having to be alone. For we, we know that scripture tells us that Jesus went into a quarantine for 40 days. Now, unlike what we had to go through, he didn't see anyone. He, Jesus had no contact with any human being for 40 days. 
We still had computers. We could Zoom. We could see each other that way. We had emails. We had phones. We could call each other. But Jesus had no one or nothing for 40 days, complete isolation. Jesus had no contact with anyone. And to make it even worse, he was in a wilderness. He, he was in a wilderness. It wasn't like he was in a nice air-conditioned home uh, with electric, air, electricity lights and stoves to cook with. And he was not only by himself for 40 days, but he was in a wilderness. And then to make things even worse, we read about the fact that during those 40 days, he had to face temptations and spiritual attacks from Satan. And yet we know that Jesus came out of that quarantine period even stronger than he was before. And so the question is, well, let's look at the scriptures. Let's look and see if Jesus is our example. See, I don't want to do this. I want to come out of this COVID-19 thing. I want to come out of this whole this whole bizarre time in life. I want to come out of this stronger than before. And so I want to look and see what Jesus did. What did he do during this quarantine time? So that I can follow his example and like him come out stronger than before. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 4. And let's begin looking at the verses at verse 1 through 14 together. But we'll, we'll look at these verses together and see what Jesus did. Let's begin reading. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. In verse 9, the devil led to him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. He said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift up their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. Now, as we just read about the situation where Jesus had been quarantined for 40 days, Satan sees that he's He's struggling because of that, and so he sees an opportunity, and he starts to tempt Jesus. But the, what we find out is the way, when we find out in the very first couple of verses, Jesus knew that God was in control. In the very first couple of verses, it said that, that Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Where he was tempted for 40 years. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted. The first couple of verses make it so clear that Jesus knew who was in charge. He knew God was in control here. It wasn't Satan that led him into the wilderness so that he could be tempted. It wasn't any man, but God was the one that was in control. God was the one that was directing the events. It was not Satan. God was the one that was directing the entire situation. What we need to remember is that God is in complete control. Folks, I think it's an important thing. We, we're, I've heard people blaming a lot of uh, people. For, you know, oh, President Trump, he's such an idiot. Or, oh, our governor, oh, our governor's such an idiot. Whatever, and everyone's blaming people. We need to remember that God that, that God is in control. The government did not order the quarantine. 
Okay, God has allowed this to happen to us for a reason. He's trying to let us go through this horrible time in our lives, this bizarre time, for a reason. And when the reason is so that we, just as Jesus said, he came out of that horrible situation, and what did it say? It said he came out with even more power. And I wonder if Jesus isn't doing the same thing for his church today. I think maybe this quarantine, if this COVID was sent so that the church can reevaluate and come out even stronger than before. Yes, we need to understand that God is in control. And the second thing that Jesus did to come out of it, he knew God was in control. But the second thing I see in these verses is that Jesus knew that God had allowed the temptations. God himself did not tempt. God, God did not prompt. God, God did not prompt the Satan to tempt. He simply allowed it to happen. God does not cause pain in our lives. God does not cause the pandemic. He didn't cause the problems, and He doesn't cause our temptations. But what He, but what this clearly shows in the Scripture is He allows them to happen. And he uses them. He uses that pain and the problems. And even this pandemic that we're going through, he uses that to, to refine us and to make us better and uses it for the glory of his kingdom. And he uses all of those things that we think are bad, he uses them for his glory in ways that we can't even imagine. Jesus knew that. He knew he was undergoing this, these temptations, but he had trust that God was simply in charge. It, he wasn't blaming God for the temptations. He knew that God was allowing those temptations. And then the third thing that we see that from Jesus in this situation is God controls all the timelines. God controls the timeline. For Jesus, in his quarantine period, it was 40 days of complete isolation and no food deep. For us today, we don't know when the end is yet. We don't know when all this is going to be done. It, who knows how long it's going to be with the way the virus is coming back. And we don't know what the governments are going to put down. We don't know when the end is. I want us to I want to just remind you historically the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu in 1918 lasted two years and it killed over 50 million people. And so, you know, we, we don't know that this is, is, is going to get worse or better. We, we don't know what's in store. We don't control the timeline. But God knows. God knows when. And my question is, are you trusting God today? Do you trust God that no matter what comes, no matter what happens, he's going to, he's in charge and he's running our life? See, Jesus knew that. Jesus had faith that God controlled the timeline. I'm sure Jesus thought, man, I'm hungry. I'm ready to get this stuff done. I'm ready to get back to the people. I, I, I'm here. I'm about ready to die. I haven't eaten so long. I'm sure Jesus thinking, I have work to do. What's going on here? But instead of those things, he knew God had a purpose, and God's timeline was going to be exercised. And so he had faith. And so do you trust God today the way Jesus did? And then the last, the next thing I noticed from Christ in these, in these passages is the fact that he resisted the temptations of Satan. And he resisted all, all the temptations Satan threw at him. He resisted it by saying, it is written. He knew God's word. He, he, he knew God's word so well it was written in his heart. And so when he the, the temptations came, he knew how to answer everything Satan threw at him. Satan first attacked at his physical hunger. We saw that in the first temptation. Well, why should this rock to bread? But that would be going against what God wanted. God wanted him to be in the wilderness and, and fasting. 
And so he refused to give in to the physical hunger. The second temptation was about control. Satan said, Jesus, you want to be in control, right? If you do this, then you can have the control. See, I think many of us today struggle with that same temptation. We want to have control. We want to rebel against the government. We're going to meet it. We're going to break the rules. We're going to do it because I need what I want. But that's, uh, that is exactly what Satan threw at Jesus. He said, you can have the control. You can have the power to control what you want, not just relying on God, but Jesus said, no, I trust God. He refused to give in to the temptation of control. And then the third one was the temptation of taking a shortcut. You know, Satan was trying to just say, you know, you can prove to everybody you're Lord right now. Throw yourself off this building and prove to everybody who you are. You can do it right now. You don't have to three years down the road now go through all these hard times. You can just make proof right now. Go ahead, take the shortcut. Make it easy on yourself. And again, Jesus refused to give in to that temptation. And, the, and as I look at us during this time of COVID, I think Satan is attacking many people. They're attacking your attitude. I think he's attacking many people on, on the aspect of submission and attacking people in terms of their want of control. And we must do the same thing as Christ and resist the temptations. And then we see also the, uh, a little point here too was that Jesus held on to his identity. Jesus knew who he was. There's an implied temptation. We, we know that Satan gave those three temptations, but there's an implied temptation in the, in the second and third temptations. Do you see what, how Satan phrased those two temptations? In the second and third temptation, each time Satan said, if you are the Son of God, then do this. And so you, there's the implied uh, temptation. If you really are who you say you are, if you are the Son of God, then do this to prove it. Well, well, I wonder how many of us have been struggling with a sense of identity through this COVID-19 thing. Many of you have said, many of you have poured your identity in your work. Well, what happens when you do that? When some people have defined themselves as, I am a uh, I am a teacher, I am a preacher, or I am a concrete worker, or I am a uh, government worker, or I am a store clerk, or I, whatever it is. How do you define yourself? Many people define themselves through the job. Well, the fact of the matter is, during this time, many people have lost their job. Well, I provide for my family. That's who I am as a man. I provide. And many people are starting to realize, uh-oh, this is getting scary. I may not be able to provide, so who am I if I'm not a provider? We're struggling with identity. Many of, many of you have come into contact with people who have the virus. Today I know of a couple of people in our brother, in our, in our uh, assembly, in our Church of Christ here at Holmes Road who are having to uh, quarantine themselves for 14 days because they came into contact with someone who had the virus. And so people are saying to themselves, well, if I get the virus, I mean, is God punishing me because I'm not the right Christian I need to be? We, we start to wonder, am I doing the right things? Is God using this as a way to, to because I'm not doing something right? But you see, Jesus knew that this, who he was. And, Jesus, and Satan could not tempt him based on identity. He knew that God has control. Maybe you're struggling with loneliness. Maybe a, you're a widow or a widower and, and you're all by yourself most of the time and you're thinking, what's going on here? Maybe you're struggling with loneliness and you're wondering, who am I that, that I don't have anybody with me? 
Well, this even these are the kinds of things that Satan can use to tempt you. Do not forget who you are. <clears throat> you are a member of God's family. You have many brothers and sisters in Christ that love you. Don't let Satan use this COVID-19 to confuse who you are. Satan often attacks identity, and he uses times in crisis to attack identity. Some people say, I must not be a good Christian if all this is happening to me. But don't give in to that identity lie from Satan. And so as I look at Jesus, how, to answer the question, how did Jesus come out of that quarantine time stronger than before? Well, as a review, he knew God was in control. He knew God allowed the temptations. He knew God controlled the timeline. He resisted the temptation to them through it. And he held on to his identity through it all. And because of those five things that we find there in Scripture, he came through it stronger on the other side. He came through ready and prepared for his three-and-a-half-year ministry that was going to change the rest of the world. And so my question to you is, how about you? Can you look to Jesus' example and do the same thing during this time of pandemic? During this time when we are struggling, do we sit back and say, let's stop criticizing people and realize God is in control? Are we allowing, are we going to believe that God is in control? Are we understanding that when we're tempted, God's allowing us to be tempted? That he's, he's, put, he's letting us go through this so that we can become stronger? Do we realize that God is in control of these timelines? Do we realize that, the, that when we resist the devil, that we will eventually, the devil will flee from us and hold on to our identity. We are a Christian. If we hold on to these five principles through however long this thing runs, when we get back together, we will be stronger, church. So hold the faith. Let's come out of this whole thing even stronger just like Jesus did during his time. There's the lesson for you this, this day. I hope it has been beneficial. And we hope to be together soon. If you do have prayer requests, please text one of the elders. You can text me. You can put it, post it on Facebook. or uh, Whatever your needs are, let them be known so that we can be praying with you, so that we can share in your struggle. But whatever you need, you have to let it be known. And we're going to have another song. Dave's going to come up. And during that song, you can post you or you can text one of us and let us know. And we can pray. If you need to give your life to Christ, maybe this, this COVID has, has woken you up to the fact that you're not a Christian. You haven't been baptized into Christ. And you need to put Christ on in baptism in order to be saved. If you need that, let us know. We're, our baptistry is still operational. We're ready to... We're ready to take you into Christ. We're ready to, uh, to baptize you if that's what your need is. If you want to study more about the Word of God, we are ready. Whatever your need is, let it be known. Let's sing together. Send
Thank you, Brother Craig, for that lesson this morning. We have a few announcements uh, to make. Just in case if, uh, you did not know, uh, Ruth Peterson, and I know we all sort of remember Ruth, she, had, she has passed away, and it's been quite a while back. Due to all this, uh, pandemic and so forth, it, it didn't get to us until late. Freda Brooks also passed away on uh, July 30. Uh, some years ago, I don't know if you remember that uh, her father was an elder here, and she had a brother that also here by the name of uh, Ralph Frazier, and he was a son of But let's pray for that family, that book family. Also in our announcements, uh, there's a family in Texas by the name of Mallory Dawkins. And uh, grandmother, I don't have it all quite together, but their family needs is asking for our prayer too. Faith Simpson has a co-worker that was tested positive for the virus, and Faith is now in self quarantine. Also, uh, Cliff Brandon asked for prayer. He will be having hip, sur hip surgery on the 13th of this month. And I believe that that's all the announcements that we have at this time. And, and let's remember that in all we do, let's remember that God is in control. And once again, Stan, thank you for reminding us of that and hoping that we will never forget that. God is in control and we pray for patience to, keep, keep, to let us remember that he is in control. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just thank you again that we have attended another service. And we thank you for your word. That thing that lets us know that you are in control. And give us the patience to remember that. Be with the, the families that were experiencing death. Heavenly Father, just give them also the patience just to wait on you. Be with faith, Heavenly Father, as she is in uh, quarantine at this time. And be with Brother Cliff Brandon as he go through hip surgery. We just thank you for being God. 
In your blessed name we pray. Amen.